Give me the thumbs up, please. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Sunday, Jan uh, sorry, Sunday, June the 27th. I welcome you to our service of worship this morning, and we acknowledge the land that we are gathered on is the traditional territory first of the Neutral people, then of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is the home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. It is a reminder for us that the great standard of living that we have is directly related to our Indigenous people, their resources, and their friendship. Let us just take a moment to bow our heads and still our hearts and prepare for this morning's service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with our spirit. spirit. Almighty God, Almighty unto God. whom all hearts be open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee and we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou art only, thou only art the Lord, thou only art Christ with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziglag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashir. He said, your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. 
from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain up upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will say Psalm 130 responsibly by the full verse. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done in this, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Rescue us, O God, for whom we wait, from the depths of depression and despair. May we trust in your mercy, know the fullness of your redemption, and share in the glory of your kingdom through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this is a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but to even desire to do something, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with, with thy spirit. spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell to his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter, is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under physicians and had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus 
came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt it in her body that she had been healed from her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his, his disciples said to him, You see, the crowd is pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened, came in fear, trembling, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some of the people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. When they came into the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing aloud. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Taliakum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately she got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they, overcome, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May only God's words be spoken and may only God's message be heard. Amen. Now... Did anybody ever watch the television show House? Did you watch House? Yeah? Did you watch House? Yeah? So House ran between November 2004 and uh, May 2012, so about eight years. I did not watch House on a regular basis, but I always loved the concept. I mean, so here was this doctor, Gregory House, who was rude, obnoxious, condescending, disrespectful, um, but had a very unconventional way of looking at medicine, and he led this team of other brilliant doctors to basically try and solve unsolvable medical conditions, you know. And I remember the few times I watched it, I always thought to myself, there has to be a team of doctors in the world somewhere like this. Like, I just think our medical profession is so amazing that I'm sure that somehow that character was based off of somebody, hopefully not as rude as obnoxious, but, but that, that brilliance that they could just look at you know, the medical field and go, okay, here's what's wrong. Our poor lady today, who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, she didn't have a doctor house, unfortunately. Can you imagine having an unexplainable sickness for over 12 years? The pain, the frustration. As I said, she didn't have a doctor house, but after many years, the one thing that still remained was her faith. There was one line in this gospel that she says that, you know, really jumped out for me, and it was, if I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. It's such a powerful statement of faith and of hope and of trust. She didn't know Jesus in any way, shape, or form, but she had heard the stories of this man, the man who was performing all these miracles, you know, curing the blind, curing people with leprosy, casting out demons. I'm also sure she probably heard the whispers of this might be the Messiah, the one who is going to restore the kingdom of the Jews. 
And with all that, I am sure there was a small part of her that was like, I wonder, you know, maybe he can cure me as well. The thing you need to understand about the woman in our story today is that as per Jewish law, because of her bleeding, she was not allowed to go into temple. She was not allowed to go in and worship. She was deemed unclean. And not only was she not allowed to go into temple, but also according to Jewish law, anything or anyone she touched was also considered unclean. So the fact that she was in this crowd and she was bumping up against people intentionally or unintentionally, because I'm sure the crowd was amazing with Jesus being there, everybody that she came in contact with was considered unclean. I'd like us to put ourselves into her shoes for a second. It always helps when you can try and look at things from somebody else's perspective. How would you have been feeling having a medical condition that you had no control over that would not permit you to see your family or your friends or, you know, come into church? You know, we have been struggling for the past 16 months um, due to this pandemic, not being able to hug our friends or family and not being able to, you know, come into church physically. Can you imagine what it would be like for another 11 years? Just imagine, you know, all the frustration that you have right now living like this for another 11 years. The difference between us and this pandemic and her is that we don't have, we, we are angry, yes, and we are tired and we are frustrated, but we aren't feeling ashamed or embarrassed because this is how she would have been made to feel. For 12 years, doctors tried to help her. I say try and I do that in air quotes. Because women at that time, I'm sorry, they were at the bottom of the barrel. They were not highly regarded, and I'm going to be a little skeptical thinking that they actually tried to help her. If anything, I think they probably just took her money. And because of that, she was left broke. She was an outcast. And I am sure the emotional toil that she was carrying because of the guilt and the shame and being broke just compounded all the trauma in her life and made her feel worse. After 12 years of suffering and isolation, I, I bet all she wanted was a miracle. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made heal. I will be made well. So she hears about Jesus, and there's something different about him. There's something different about Jesus. I mean, she's never heard anyone say that he's asking for money for the healing that he's doing. On, co on the contrary, all she hears about is his kindness and his love. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. You know, this is a woman who we can look to for guidance and inspiration. You know, in desperate times, she didn't give up her faith. I talked about this last week, you know, that even in the hardest of times, we still need to continue to pray. And that's what this woman was doing. At the point of desperation, at her wit's end, honestly, she could have she could have just given up. She could have just disappeared and nobody would have known. But she didn't. She believed that if she touched Jesus' clothes, she would be healed. And she did touch his clothes that day, and she was healed. We hear immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. 
when people question whether or not we should believe the Bible, people question whether or not, you know, where is the proof in, in Jesus and his power and God's divinity, one of the things that we always need to look for is stories that are repeated in the Gospels. And this is one of those stories. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And there needs to be a significance, there has to be a significance why all three authors would look at this story and go, you know what, this one's really important. This one people need to hear. The importance of this story, the rationale for this story is that it is proof of Jesus' power. It is proof of his divinity. I spoke about it last week. I actually mentioned this story last week. This woman's faith and hope and trust in God allowed her to receive the divine power of God. For 12 years, her life was literally slowly flowing out of her. And by one simple act of reaching out, the power of Christ flowed within her and she was healed. We also hear in our gospel story how Jesus healed Jairus' daughter. Jairus was a Jewish leader and really one of the last people who probably should have believed in Jesus, one of the last people who should have been reaching out. As a Jewish leader, he had heard all the negativity about Jesus, as well as all the good. And he chose to put all that negativity aside and have faith, believe in the power of Jesus. So Jesus went to this little girl, and this time, unfortunately, because the little girl was so sick, she couldn't reach out to Jesus, but Jesus reached out to her. He took her hand and said, little girl, get up. And she did. The power of Christ flowed from him into this little girl, and she was healed. The power of Christ is still available for us today. It still flows from the cross. The stories in today's gospel, these are big miracles. They are. And I'll, I'll be honest, I believe in big miracles. I do. I think big miracles happen a lot more than we realize. But I also believe in the day-to-day -day miracles. The day-to-day -day miracles are just as important. And they can make a huge difference in somebody's life. And we can participate in the miracle of Christ's healing. We can participate in those simple acts of kindness. When I think of our history, a couple people that come to mind that I think reached out and made a difference, that allowed Christ to flow into the world. I think of Mother Teresa, who is now St. Teresa of Calcutta, who literally took the hands of many that people considered outcast and unworthy. Now, the people that she took their hands, I mean, they, didn't nece they weren't necessarily cured, but they did feel loved. They did feel God's grace. And that in itself sometimes is a miracle. The other person I think of is Martin Luther King Jr. Now, he took the heart. He took the hearts of a whole generation. And he just made the world look at things differently. He made a whole generation, a whole group of people, all of a sudden feel worthy and loved. And again, that in itself is a miracle. These, again, I know are big miracles, and we can't all participate in big miracles. But I think every day, in day-to-day -day life, doctors, lawyers, nurses, health care providers, social workers, grocery store attendants, you think of everybody who has had to work during this pandemic. I think everybody who can look at the world, who can 
who can put themselves in other people's shoes and can see beauty in the ugliness can help with Christ's miracles. When we reach out and touch Christ's clothing, it's not just so we can be healed. It's so we can help others. By reaching out and touching Christ's clothing, we develop a better understanding of the world around us. Hopefully we are able to listen a little bit better. And hopefully we can demonstrate God's love. You never know, you never know how one simple act of kindness can make a difference in somebody's life. And I mean simple. I mean sometimes as simple as just opening up the door and holding it for them while, you know, at the, I'm thinking here at the 7-Eleven, you know, you hold the door open for somebody. I do it on a regular basis, and I'll be honest with you, I tend to catch people off guard because for whatever reason, we don't do that anymore. A simple act of kindness can put a smile on somebody's day and can change things. If I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. Our faith in Christ can allow us to heal. Our faith in Christ allows us to share God's love and God's grace. In the, the colic today, we hear, may we love you with our whole hearts, our whole souls, our whole minds, our strength, and we, may we love our neighbors as ourselves. When you touch Jesus' cloak, you can be healed. And when you are healed, you can then share that healing, you can share that love, and you can love your neighbors as yourself. I want to ask a few questions before I end today, and I want you to think about it. How are you reaching out to Christ? How are you reaching out to Christ? Are you actually reaching out to Christ? And if for whatever reason you're not, why? What are you fearful of? What's, what's stopping you? What's, what's blocking you? from allowing God to love you, to take care of you, and to heal you. If I but touch his clothing, I will be made well. I pray that your faith and your hope and your trust in the Lord is strong enough that you will continuously reach out to Christ. I pray that when you do reach out to Christ, that you are given the guidance and the healing that you are asking for. I also pray that you are also able to hear Christ, just as the woman listened to Christ after she touched him. It's really important that we talk to God, but we also need to listen. And I just pray, I pray that together that we all reach out, we all reach out and we touch, we touch Christ's clothing. And together as a community, as a world, that we are made well. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we find ourselves in a storm-tossed world, let us gather our needs and concerns to call upon our God, saying, O oh God, hear our prayer. And so we pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere, meeting in small house groups, in rural town churches, and in great city cathedrals. Grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith, and show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. We pray, O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for our Bishop Susan, our Rector Jody, our parish family of St. James and St. Brendan. Especially today, we remember Louise Hayton, Bonnie Hetherington, Emma Hayton, John Hogan, Kent Horn, Robin Horton, and their families. We pray for all who minister and preach and who enlarge and enrich our understanding of God and help us respond to his love. We pray, O oh God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we pray for those whom we love, family and friends who are special people in our lives, wherever they may be. We pray for their hopes, their fears, their problems, and their needs. But most of all, we thank you for each one of them and for what they give and mean to us. We pray, O oh God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, today's gospel showed the tremendous faith of a sick woman. Help us to learn from this that we should always pray and not give up, and that if we ask, it will be given to us. We ask for health and healing today for Mary Cullen, Elizabeth Ebert, Lois Greenslade, Louise Hayton, Nancy Lisk, Mark McLaughlin, Maureen Stewart, Dominic, Julia, Donna, and Megan. We pray, O oh God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, into your caring hands we commit those who have died, and we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. This morning, we especially remember Martin Polenko, who passed away on Monday. We pray, O oh God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Caring God, we thank you for being with us through the fury and the calm of our life's voyage, revealing your care to us and drawing us to new life. May we live as we pray in the protection of Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come to me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole church. 
Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all of them with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, and pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and with, with our the Spirit. Spirit. Peace be with you at home, everyone. Let us pray. God of wisdom, receive all we offer you this day. Enrich our lives with the gift of your spirit that we may follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with thy spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. He is and right and so to do. It is very meet and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who has gathered us together in this Eucharist feast that we may be renewed in love, joy, and peace. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O God of high. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, who didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, 
he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make this, make with these thy holy gifts, which we are now to offer thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded to us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we do earnestly thy, and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive thy most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so not to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Dear friends, for those of you who cannot be with us here in person, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Amen.
Let us pray. God of power, we are nourished by the riches of your grace. Raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, and fit us for his eternal kingdom, that all the world may call him Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through this wilderness and protect you during this storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Just a few announcements. Um, as I told you, the fourth Sunday of every month from now on, we are going to be having a third service. Uh, so today at 4 p.m., we are having our first ever praise and worship service. Mark Wakefield and friends will be um, our band. We're actually going to, we have drums, keyboard, a uh, couple guitars. So uh, service is going to be a little different, different music. I do hope that you will give it a try and possibly join us. We will be live streaming at 4 p.m. Uh, the orange shirts, we are still taking orders. If you would like to have an orange shirt, um, so we can all wear them together on September 30th. Uh, it's in remembrance of the indigenous children who, uh, who lost their lives in our residential schools and for those who actually survived the residential schools. So we are accepting orders until Wednesday, which is June the 30th. Also, the beacon is coming out. It will be out um, July 2nd because the first is a holiday. So July 2nd, it will be sent out via email. Uh, if you would like a hard copy, I'm gonna actually encourage people to come pick them up. Last month, we, we hand delivered most of them uh, for those people who did not have email because uh, it, we were still in a stay at home order. So if you know somebody who, isn't, who doesn't have a live stream, who doesn't have email, I'm gonna ask that you please call them and say, hey, would you like to go for a walk and maybe come to the church and they can pick up their uh, monthly beacon. Also, lastly, this past Friday, I started something called a prayer tent. Um, over in the park behind us here, I put up our little tent, and it will be every Friday during the farmer's market, weather permitting. I'm not sitting out there in the rain, sorry. Um, but for people to come by, and I have this beautiful table set up, and it has all sorts of prayer books. It has a little labyrinth. Um, it has a Bible you can sit and color in. It's a place for you, you can personally come and pray, or you can come and have me pray with you, have me pray for you. You can yell a name at me and say, put them on your prayer list. I actually had two people say, don't pray for me, but pray for so-and-so. So I have two extra people on my prayer list. Um, so yeah, please come and spend Friday morning in some prayer if you, would, uh, if you wish. I'd love to have you. And that is the end of our service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. Take care and continue to be safe.